testing everything. Okay. Okay, this is what we talk about is theoretical <coughs> sobering activation of bacteria. So let's say you had a 10 to the 6 at the beginning. You got the heat in there. About a minute. How many bacteria are still left? 10 to the fifth, so five log. You heat two minutes, four log is still survive. Three minutes, three logs still survive. Four minutes, two logs still survive. Five minutes, one log still survive. Until seven minutes, barely has bacteria survived. And these are the submarine activation, heated the bacteria in the solution at 121 degrees Celsius. Now, once we have this table, how are you going to explain it? Therefore, in the, uh, I will say in another, another uh, this simply of microorganism called the predictive microbiology, they come out two concepts regarding submarine activation, which is D-value and Z-value. And these we want to talk about. This is what we talk about, is thermal Inactivation kinetics. And we talk about very important two concepts. Number one is D value. Number two is Z value. Or Z value. Okay, what is D value? It is time. First of all, D value is a time. Time required to kill 90% of a specific bacteria in a median of foods or food products at a set up temperature. So for example, let's say D value is 15 seconds. Then you have to describe more for E. coli in TSB <coughs> broth at 71 degrees Celsius, let's say. That means E. coli, this type of E. coli cell, this specific E. coli cell, at TSB tropic soil broth, if you heat at 71 degrees Celsius, need 50 minutes to kill 90% of the bacteria compared to the unheated control. Now, what means kill 90%? which means you kill one log CFU per ml. Which means you reduce from 10 to the 5 to 10 to the 4. That is reduced 90%. Okay. This is 10 to the 5. This is 10 to the 4. This is reduced. Is this 90%? This is 90% of. Is that clear? If you don't understand. That's a mess, a little bit tricky here. Okay, if you don't know love, then it's difficult to understand. That's why our textbook is called the curing 90% of the bacteria. When you study for the microbiology class, a little bit at a vaster level, they will say curing one log. It's the same thing. Let's say the control, unheated, 10 to the fifth cell. Okay, I'm gonna heat in this bacteria, the E. coli, at TSB 71 degrees Celsius. I need 15 seconds at this specific temperature will be reduced to 10 to the fourth. How many reduction we have? 90,000. 90,000 is 
of original a hundred thousand cell. That we call curing ninety percent. Okay. So D value. Let's say this is a story. It, uh, this example we talk about D value. What you should express it? Usually we write D seventy one equals fifteen seconds equal. Usually we wrote like that. Sometimes we say equal in TSP. Okay, we use it because this is temperature. Now, be careful. This is specific for this equal. If you're using other equal, like you're using salmonella or listeria, this D value will be changed. And this is in this TSB. If it's over beef, it's going to be changed. So that's a, the condition is fixed for that specific bacteria in this specific media. That is called the D value. Okay, what is Z value? Z value is a temperature. D value is a time. Temperature required for change one log unit of D value. Okay, what that means? 71 degrees Celsius, you cube, you call it over 57. Need 15 seconds, which 90%. If I cook at 55 degrees Celsius, I may need 150 seconds for E. coli in TSV. What is this? This is roughly is too long. This is roughly. Uh, sorry, this roughly is one log. Is one point three log. This roughly is two point three log. Did you see the difference between here? That is one log difference. So. What is the Z value? That equals 71 divided minus by 55 equals 16 degrees Celsius. This is the Z value. That means if you are low down the heating temperature from 71 to 55, low down 16 degrees Celsius, you require much longer time, which means 90% more than 15 seconds, which is almost 150 seconds to curing the bacteria, to curing the same 90% of the bacteria. This is called Z value. Okay? Do you understand the, the trick be, between that? The D value is a time to require at a specific temperature for bacteria at a specific medium or food. Z value to cure 90% of the bacteria. Z value is a temperature change to make the change of the 90%, or we say one log units of the Z value. So it's a temperature. So the, the idea is, is like this. Okay, so that's called, called the Z value. Now, once you see these two lines there, it is pretty straightforward. Can you see it's like just a linear line? But I tell you one thing, in the real life, it is not going to be like that. You see the thermal inactivation right here. This is the number, and this is the time. You see it's like this. This is major, possibly, is ETSB solution which means it is in a medium, or liquid medium. If it's on a food product, it's different. Let's say in a beef. The beef, the curve will not be like this. 
Or be like that. Very similar to you gross curve, but opposite. Why? Because the heat right here on the beef surface, the beef have a geometric morphology. It's not a be it's not a going to be uniform except the heat. Lots of the time is surface gonna heat up first, then the center will be the later. Therefore, what happened? At the beginning, it's gonna be dropped. The bacteria are killing very slow. Then suddenly they're gonna kill a lot. And then later on you have a, a even a lag phase or a stationary phase, which means more or less some of the bacteria will be resistant to the heat. That is called a subpopulation. Okay, I'm not going to go too, de too detail. This is another discipline of microbiology called predictive microbiology. They use the mathematics model to explain the thermal inactivation. There are lots of commercial available software have at least a 10 different mass equation to explain the thermal inactivation. So I just want to let you know, the thermal inactivation is not that easy. This is the only for bacteria in a gross media or in liquid media. And the thermal inactivation in a beef products is different. And you also need to know the thermal inactivation impacts will be affected by fat content salt content, moisture enhancement rate, and also different ingredients when we do the marination of the beef. So I just wanted you to know, it's not that easy. Okay, this is well explained. Bacteria, microorganisms are not killed instantly. Okay, this, that's why this sentence I said I'm gonna explain to you later on. It's explained right here. And the population deaths usually appear, uh, occurs explosionary, something like this. So once you have this figure, we say this is a shoulder, and this is a pair. That's the terminology using for thermal inactivation. Okay, I've done tons of research about that in the lab. Uh, we publish lots of papers in the lab. So I want to tell you it's not that easy. Okay? Not like this. Not like the, the, this curve. This is a very ideal curve. Okay? Okay. Uh, we're going to go very quickly right here. Conditions influencing the effective of antimicrobial agents. This is easily understanding. Population size. Of course, large population take a longer time to cure. You had 10,000 cells compared to you have two cells. Of course, 10,000 cells took much longer time to cure compared to only two cells. Population composition. Well, we know some of the microorganisms might be susceptible to antimicrobial agents. Some of them may be resistant, especially in those spore forming bacteria. So it really depends what's the components and what's the composition of the bacteria. Okay, the concentration. Usually the higher the better of the antimicrobial, but not necessary, not linear. Okay, we did find that some of the antimicrobials, when they reach certain uh, concentration, let's say lactic acid, when they reach 5%, might be no difference compared to 10%. Uh, duration of exposure time, of course longer exposure, more microorganisms will be cured, but not always. Temperature. Usually higher temperature of antimicrobial solution will be killing more bacteria. But be careful, it's not going to work for chlorine. When you prepare chlorine solution, chlorex, don't heat it. If you heat it, the chlorine of gas is going to come out. So some e exception. Usually for the antimicrobial solution, let's say lactic acid solution, you heat it, you heat it at 50 degrees Celsius, it's going to be more effective to killing bacteria. Okay, last one. Local environments, of course. pH, viscosity, organic matter. Is there biofilm formation? Biofilm will be more resistant to antimicrobials compared to vegetative cells. 
Now, I want to mention is organic matter. When you prepare a chlorine solution, we'll mention later on. The first thing is that the beaker or the container to hold on chlorine has to be clean. If you have a dust, debris, soil on the container, the chlorine most effective components, hypochlorite gases, will be gone because it will react with those dust, debris, soil, those called organic matter. If they reacted, you have organic matter that they reacted with chlorine, the hypochlorite gases will be gone very, very soon. So the research in my lab, which is showing if you have 100 ppm free chlorine, you adding some of the soil there, the 100 ppm will be decreased to 0 0.5 ppm in like 30 seconds, very quick. Okay, so just be careful the organic matter. So, uh, give you some of the example. This is what we did in the lab. Okay, we heated a Bunsen burner, we heat the, uh, the loop. Now, I don't like this example because this is wrong. This should be heat until here. Is that right? I said the prevent cross contamination. This picture gave you very bad impression. Lots of people in the lab just heat it on the, on the surface and on the very top. That's not good. So heat is one of the most common physical control. At high temperature, floating nuclear gases destroyed, water is removed. That's why we use heating, Bunsen burner, to kill bacteria. To this, uh, this is called sterilization, sterilization on the uh, on the loop, metal loop, before you transfer in bacteria. Okay, dry the moisture heat. Uh, when we talk about heat, there is a two methods, dry heat and the moisture heat. And um, basically, dry heat is the other. So you change microbe protein, remove water. Moisture heat is you denaturing their protein. This table, I really like it. You could see What's the impact of the temperature for bacteria survive? Okay, five degrees Celsius is the refrigerator temperature. 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Our home freezer usually minus 10 degrees Celsius. This is Fahrenheit, okay? If you like Fahrenheit, you can use that. Our human body temperature, 37. You know that. If you have 38, 100, 104, that's not good, which means you have a fever. Is that right? During COVID-19, some places say you're going to have to do quarantine for 14 days. 63 degrees Celsius. This is the bacteria can kill in 30 minutes. Okay, we don't want to mention this. If you look at your milk bottle or some of your, some of your orange juice bottle, you see flash pasteurization. What this means? Right here tells me. 71.6 degrees Celsius, 15 seconds. There is a hot line, pipeline there. Milk and juice going through real quick. Set up 71.6 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. This is cute. Most veg turtle cells, not for endospore, not for biofilm, not for heat resistant bacteria. That is why the milk and the juice, you could put in the room temperature a little bit. You put in a milk in room temperature overnight, it's going to be completely brutal because lots of bacteria, thermal resistant lactic acid bacteria still there, sometimes. Okay, we'll just let you know. That is called a flash pasteurization. Okay, boring temperature, theoretically 100 degrees Celsius, but it depends on elevator, is that right? In the mountain area, usually lower. This is which, which means in the sea land. Okay, so suppose Q2 hours. What's the temperature we use for autoclave? 121 degrees Celsius. 50 minutes killing most of the bacteria species in the spores. 
Okay, if with the temperature reach 140 degrees Celsius, what are we gonna do? Bacteria kill in three seconds. And if they reach 160 degrees Celsius, in those spots will be killed. This is usually for our oven or our electronic skillet surface. Okay, or on the pan surface. So just to let you know, that's a temperature range. Pasteurization, pasteurization of milk. That's used for milk, beer, and some beverages, not for alcohol beverages. Wine, they don't do that. Remember, pasteurization, be very careful. This is not a sterilization process. It is only few bacteria present or slow storage by reducing total amount of microorganisms. Autoclave. Remember in the lab, which bacteria can grow 55 degrees Celsius is bacillus. And I said geobacillus is a quality control marker for autoclave. So this is autoclave. Okay? It's, a, it's about a hundred thousand dollars, even more than that. When you go inside, a steam jacket, steam comes on the top, and this is a chamber, and the temperature could reach 121 degrees Celsius. And uh, all types of microorganisms, including in the spore, will die. So it's a sterilization process. Now how do we make sure it's functional? You, we can use in geobacillus. Because geobacillus is thermophiles that could be survived as high as 90 degrees Celsius. If you put the geobacillus in the autoclave, after autoclave, the geobacillus still survive, which means your autoclave is failed. You have to look at a mechanic person to fix it. Okay, it's breakdown all the time in the lab. That's one of the reasons we have to cancel lab this week because the autoclave is not working on the second floor for two weeks because the requirements for the scheme is, is a lot. Okay, lots of time they stuck there, they did not have enough supply, they don't have enough gas, it's all cracked down somehow. Okay, UV lights. So first of all, you need to know, our sunlight is more or less can kill bacteria. The range between 400 and 700 nanometers. Okay, you should know that. More or less can kill some bacteria. This is the reason in the summertime, you're not gonna have flu virus, coronavirus the cases decreased because the sunlight gave you some protection. But once this is gone in the fall, it will start to come back. Because that's a natural protection you lose. Okay? What are the nanometer of the wavelengths for radiation will killing bacteria? This should be around 180 nanometer to 170 nanometer. So basically is X-rays and the gamma rays. Now what's the mechanism for those ultraviolet light to kill bacteria is to form some diamond. TT, is that TT connected together to prevent DNA replication. It has been using a lot in the food industry but they still have the question, people will accept it or not. Because consumers are always worried about it. They may have some residue radiation still left on the surfaces of the products. So if you see these, you see some of them in the market, not too many. Okay, sometimes organic markets, you see it. In Krugel, I don't think you're gonna see any of the radiation control microbes. But I do tell you, they're using one product a lot for radiation, people don't know, is ground beef. Because ground beef is zero tolerance for E. coli oven 5787. Once they come out of the grounding, they're using UV light radiation to scan the surface. The last step of the decontamination. Now how about if the ground beef has been, has been contaminated with oven 5787? You have to use them cooked to ready to eat meat. So be careful. When you eat hot dogs, frankfurters, 95% of them come from <coughs> contaminated ground beef. It's true, okay? Because they want to save that. They cook you ready to eat meat. Uh, general principles of the chemical control. Here we mentioned is the ideal situation for uh, antimicrobials. So they can 
kill slow the growth of bacteria. Not going to be toxic for human being. Soluble in the water. We want them to be soluble in the water. You know some of the antibiotics, some of the antimicrobials cannot dissolve in the water. You have to use alcohol, and that is bad because we don't want to prepare our alcohol solution. It's storable, which means longer shelf life time. Of course, we want them happen uh, more quickly at lower concentrations, such as chlorine. Now, what are the important when we're choosing an agent? Temperature. Is that right? If you want a hot temperature, you're not going to you're going to think about which one will not affect antimicrobials. pH. Acid solution. Sometimes it's going to be impact. Sometimes it will cause corrosive. Duration of the disinfection. How long it's going to stay. Okay, next we're going to talk a little bit about, about the cleaning. First of all, cleaning and sanitation. In the real life, it's combined. But the concept is should be separate. Cleaning is using to remove first type of the food soil, which is fat, protein, carbon, hydrogen, and mineral salts. So cleaning not purposely to inactivation bacteria. However, it always combined with sanitizing. That's why you will feel in cleaning or will be curing bacteria uh, besides physical removing. So let's say we have a detergent. What's the major components? More or less, you have some surfactants. Surfactants go through emulsification process, which means they break down large fatty acids, become smaller, and then let the agent to be reacted has a large, extended, large surface. That's why it's called surfactants. Second component is a builder. What are the chemical characteristics of the detergents? Is that alcohol? Is that alkaline? Is that an enzyme? Is that an oxidizing agent? So next component is the filler. Okay. Which means what type of the formats is that? Is that a water solution or is that a salt, salt solution? Because we want it to be water and salts. That can be easily and safely handled. Last one. Lots of time the detergents have them corroding inhibitors because we want to prevent the corrosive, especially for the hands and the skin surfaces. So what are the cleaning really do? Physical inactivation for the soils, change solubility. We want them to be dissolved. And the chemical interaction with food soils form water soluble substance. Here are some of the examples for the cleaning. But be careful, they also gonna kill in bacteria because those things is, is a combination right now. For example, soap. They remove microbes by emulsifying and solubilizing particles on the surface. Detergents or surfactants, they cause the cell leakage. Here are the two things. Uh, this is benzoyl chloride and this is cytoprotein chloride. 